we're building this downtown GIS for Stockton. Okay, and the main reason we're doing that is so you guys can learn how to do it. Okay, that's the main reason. Mm -hmm. It's possible at some future time it may have some value. Um, but the main re reason we're doing it is so you guys can get experience working with the tools and the data. Okay, so I'm just going to walk you through kind of the layers that we want and then for, for five minutes and then we're going to talk about how we build the layers and then we'll talk about how we divvy up these tasks so that when you guys need filler work you can do this, okay? Okay, so Stockton is in a land grant and the blocks, it's laid out on a regular grid. The guy that surveyed, the, the surveyor that surveyed Stockton I think had an extra link in his chain so the blocks are like supposed to be 600 by 600 and they end up being like 606 feet. I can't remember what the exact math is, but okay, so here's what we're trying to do. And I think this will make sense to you guys. It's really only cost effective to do this in a dense urban area, right? Because the land values are high enough, right? It wouldn't make sense to do this in a lot of places because you're never going to, you know, you'll never survey enough to make it worth the setup time, right? Okay, so we've got something that looks like this, these blocks, okay? Okay, now, ideally, you have a centerline monument at all your intersections, right? Okay, only in Stockton, that almost never happens. Okay, so we'll talk about why. Okay, so what you get is you get your blocks, get laid out. and I don't remember what the street widths are, but they're pretty consistent across downtown because all these are coming off the same subdivision map, right? Okay, so then in each, inside each block, you've got lots. So that's what the original subdivision looked like. You gotta pretend those are all the same size. I didn't do a very good job. Okay. We're not done yet. I need another color. What do I got? What haven't I used? I can use red. Okay, so then, so these are the lots. Then you get you get what we call the actual parcels. So somebody will come in and they'll buy these two. They'll buy these two lots. That's one parcel. Two lots, but one parcel. Okay. In other words, you can't pull two building permits on here. It's one legal parcel, okay? And then maybe this guy comes in and he gets these two and a half. And then this guy gets this lot and a half. And then these two lots get sold individually. Okay, so you get something that looks like that, okay? Okay, so we're gonna build, so right now you can go into the, the county or city website and download the parcel layer. You can get these red parcels, okay? But they're garbage. The data's not good, right? It's not survey grade. So we're gonna build, we're gonna, the goal here is to build a survey grade parcel layer for downtown Stockton, okay? Okay, so, but there's there's kind of a stack of stuff that gets built one on the other, okay? And that's part of what we're, we're teaching you guys. Okay, I'm trying to see if I have any other colors I like. Do I have a purple? Oh, purple. Okay, so let's talk about the layers. Okay, now the other thing, so what happened in Stockton is they never set center line mons, okay? So most of these are these are non-existent. There's no mon, the, the, the point exists, but there's no monument marking it, okay? Oh, oh the, I, I can't, I'm not saying there aren't any center line mons in downtown, but there's very few. Okay, so what they did is they came in and they put little chisel crosses on the sidewalk where the lot lines are. They're usually at some offset. Okay, and there's not chisel crosses on every lot line, but they're on some. That's back in the old days. Okay, you can't do that anymore. You got to put your tag on it. But these were just so if you walk downtown and look at the sidewalks, you'll see these crosses. Okay, and then as things went in, somebody came in and they did a parcel map here, and they split this lot in two, and then they had to go in and monument this because the law makes them. Okay, so you don't have center line mons, but you have these other monuments on the block, right? And so what you do when you go in to do a survey is 
if you're trying to establish let's say this parcel then you survey the chisel crosses on each side of these two streets to establish these right away lines and then you can start doing your offsets to build your parcel okay all right so here's the layers we need if you think about what do you got to have in a GIS to build this okay so the first thing we need okay is we want to have uh, the street center lines okay that's this in pink okay that's one layer okay so once you have the street center lines then you guys see we can get the block boundaries with some offsets right that's the orange, orange lines. You guys with me so far? Mm -hmm. We get the street center lines, then we get the block boundaries. Okay, once we have the block boundaries, then we can put in the lot lines. Okay. Right, the blue. Once we have the lot lines in, now we can build a survey grade parcel layer. That's the thing that goes on. I, I built this wrong. That goes on the top, right? Okay, but you may ask yourself, okay, so if I had to do this as a pyramid, it looks like this in the GIS. I'm not going to draw a very good pyramid either. Okay, so this is street center lines. Okay, and then we have block boundaries, blocks, lots, parcels, parcels at the top, right? Okay. Okay, but how do we get street center lines? We want survey grade street center lines. Now, if there was just a bunch of center line monuments, what could we go do? We could just go survey the center line monuments and we'd have our all center lines, right? But there are no center line monuments in downtown Stockton. So what do you got to go survey? The crosses. Good. You can make a surveyor out of you. Yeah, you got to go survey all the purple stuff, right? So how do we figure out where the purple stuff's at? Austin's favorite thing, yeah, map, research, and Kogo, right? Okay, so underneath the pyramid, the pyramid sits on a couple foundational layers. Okay, so the pyramid is going to sit on, we're going to have a map layer with the footprint of the map. Okay, and then from the map, we're going to get a property corner PC monument layer. Okay. Okay, so what Austin and I did, I can't remember our system, but we basically came up with a system where we numbered all the blocks in downtown, Michaela. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then every block got a folder. Okay, and in that folder, Austin put all the survey maps in that block. Okay, and so what we want to do is, the first thing we do is we go in and we co-go all the maps in the block. Which we haven't done any of yet. Okay, so that's the first task. Right, so if we wanted to keep a separate list here, I'm running out of colors. Do I have green? Oh, look at that, green. Oh, there's a skinny green right there. All right, okay, so if we wanted to get a list of tasks, okay, so the very first thing we gotta do is the map research. Is that done, Austin? I, I believe it's close to done. Okay, so Austin, I think that's done. Austin can confirm. Okay, so then the very next thing we gotta do is map Kogos, right? Okay. Then, after we're done with the map Kogos, the next thing we do is we put together what I call a record land net. It's like a, it's just a search drawing. It's a fancy name for a search drawing. Record land net. Okay. Man, that's a lot of Kogo. It is a lot of Kogo, right? So we don't. So here's what we can do, just to teach you guys, is we won't, we don't have to do this whole thing at once. So here's what I want you to do. You guys go pick out a three block by three, a three by three block. We're gonna do that, we're gonna take it from start to finish that three by three block section, okay? Because I want you guys, we may not We may not end up doing all downtown, maybe we will, I don't know yet, but we'll, we'll at least we'll get through the three by three block area so you guys can see how this works. Okay, so we get the record land net, which now all so far, all this is done in CAD, right? Okay, but the point isn't to teach you guys CAD, you already know CAD, the point is to teach you guys GIS. Okay, so after we have the record land net done, then we're gonna go out and we're gonna do a field survey. And we're actually going to go survey some crosses and some other monuments. Okay, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to survey all the curbs because we can split split curbs, do what they call split curbs, to come up with the, with the center line if we don't have enough monuments. Okay, so we're actually, we'll take you and Austin, will go with me, we'll get somebody else to go with us, and we'll go spend a day downtown. 
Okay, it was, it's a three by three block, it might be two or three days. We'll go down and we'll survey all the monuments. You guys need to learn how to be field surveyors anyway, right? Okay, so we bring all that data in and then we're gonna adjust the land net. Adjust the land net. Okay. Okay, then after we have good, what we think is good survey grade line work in CAD. Now it's it's not exact. So if you wanted to survey a, a particular parcel, you'd still have to go in and check some things and do a little more work. But it's gonna be, I don't, we're gonna have stuff within a half a foot or a foot of where it needs to be. Is that good enough to tell if you got a building encroachment? Yeah, pretty close. Okay, so we adjust the land net, then we import the, the center lines and the block boundaries and the lot lines get imported into CAD. Sorry, get imported into the GIS, import to GIS, okay? Now there's a little bit of cleanup to do, but now you have shapes in your GIS. You have lines and polygons and points in your GIS. Okay, then we go in and we do, this is the last step, is we attribute the data. Okay, that means you click on the shape and you add the, not, the tabular data, the non-spatial data to the shape, right? Okay, so for example, on a monument, you know, what might we want to know about a monument? So we've got a point in our GIS that's a monument, so what, what might we want to know about that monument? Yeah, type. Is it a pipe? Is it a cross? Right. Nice. What else might we want to know? Size. Yeah. Size, material. How about who surveyed it? Who said it? Surveyor, right? What about the date it was surveyed? Date, set, right? Okay. And then we might want to know. If we know, what is its condition? Is it in or out? Is it existing or is it destroyed? Okay, so you think about now, if, we, if we're, we're pleaded, so we're gonna do that for the mod, we're gonna attribute all these layers, okay? Then at some point, we can go in and ask questions like, uh, show me all the monuments in this two block area that are existing, right? Or show me all the monuments that Landon Blake has set in downtown, or Show me all the parcels in downtown that have that are on a map, that are shown on a map, or not shown on a map, right? Okay, so the, I don't know if we'll ever get this far into the implementation, but the ultimate goal is if we, if we did this for the whole downtown area and somebody called for a land title survey in downtown Stockton, how quickly could we put something together? Super quick, maybe a one day field survey just to check some monuments, right? But like the idea is if you build now, there's obviously all kinds of upfront. There's a huge upfront investment to be able to do that, but it might be worth it in it if, there, if the area is dense enough, there's enough transaction volume, there's enough real estate being traded back and forth and this upfront investment may be worth it, right? Okay, but that's not why we're really doing it. Why we're really doing it is because we want you guys to, to understand how to work with this kind of survey data in a GIS, okay? Because you never know when we might get hired by a client that wants us to build this kind of GIS for, the, for what they own, right? An irrigation district or a power company or a, a, you know, the largest almond farmer in California, right? They may say, hey, we, it's time, we want a survey grade GIS. Do you guys know how to build it? And what do we want you two to be able to say? I wanna be able to say, yep, I got two people in my building know how to build that from the bottom up, right? Okay, so that's what we're doing. So next thing to do for you guys is pick your three by three block, your three by three block area. Okay, Austin, you just pick it, tell tell Michaela what it is, okay? So just three blocks by three blocks. Three blocks by, so nine blocks, okay? Because I want something small enough that it's manageable. Okay, then what I want you guys to do is go into, when you go into base camp, we're gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna create a list in base camp and I can help you guys. This is part of what I want you guys to learn is the project management. So when we go into base camp, I want a list, a task list under to-dos boundary research, and then you're gonna have one checkbox for each block with the block number, okay? And then if Michaela has a slow Thursday, she can go into base camp and say, oh, that block still needs to be done, she can go do it. She does it, she checks the box, okay? Because we want you guys to be able to share this work, right? Yeah. Okay, so then the next thing you do is, after you guys have the research, all nine blocks of research, then you go in all the maps, go on a Kogo list. Every map is on a, has a checkbox. And then you guys start taking down these maps, right? Now, as you do the maps, here's what I'd like. Before you Kogo a map, send it to me, because if it's really old, it may not be worth a Kogo. Yeah. 
Okay, we got to evaluate that. Okay, but then as you guys, so if I tell you, yep, you guys bring me, you say, hey, we got we got block eight done. You bring me all the maps for block eight, I'll go through and say, hey, here's, here's the maps we need to Kogo, and I'll highlight what we want to Kogo on every map. Okay, you guys take those maps. When you're done with the Kogo, I'll check them. Okay? Okay, and then the next thing is then, you guys probably won't do this without me. We'll probably sit down together and we'll put together, we'll just take a day and we'll put together your land net. Or maybe we'll do it one block at a time. As you guys finish a block, you come in, we'll glue the maps together for that block. Okay? So the idea here is you guys are never gonna run out of stuff to do. Right? Because you're gonna just be able to go in here, like this will keep you guys, this will be your filler work for the winter. You'll be able to just come in here, grab a task when you need it. Okay, now what I do want you to do though is before you do that, make sure that we don't have other work that needs to get done. Right? But this will keep you guys, you know, sometimes you guys are at home kind of twiddling your thumbs because I'm too busy that afternoon to get you something immediately. This will this is productive work you guys can do and you guys will learn a bunch. I think it'd be a good 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 experience for you. Okay? So uh, we need a place for this to live. Um, I think it's on the server. Is I've, it? I've seen it. It's in a GIS folder? I'm pretty sure. Okay, so Austin, can you kind of wrap your hands around it um, okay. next next Monday? Try to find it. Just see what, where is it at, what box, you know, where have you pulled the maps, pick your pick your area. What's the two, can you remind me, because um, I'm going to have to probably go online and play with it a little bit. It's the, the county's website. You can, yep. I know that's, there, there's a second website that we used, I think, because you pull the parcel maps from from San Joaquin County, right? I think that's all you need is, is the county site for that's now. That's all it was? I think for now, yeah. I think that's all you're gonna need. Now, when we get further along, we may be looking at the tax assessor data. Okay. Right? Um, but I don't think we need to do that right now. Um, so Austin can kind of remember where he's at with this Monday, pick your three by three block area, and then Austin, you can get base camp set up and then show, you know, show Michaela, tell her when it's ready, and then you guys will have stuff to do. When we get yeah. slow, okay, and you just keep me in the loop on your progress. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll have to once I look at it, I'll see how much is still yeah. left to go. Yep. Because there's there might still be a tiny bit of map research left, yep. which would be good for Michaela to see. Yep. Because I did a lot of that. She hasn't done any of it. You know? Yeah, no, that'd be good for. That's part um, of what we're trying to do. Which it's easy, it's, it's easy, yep. but it's good to know. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there, I just, I'm just trying to think back. There's a lot of folders. It's yeah, no, that's fine. So you got, you know, you guys are gonna work through a little bit of this, and then you'll come back with questions. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. But this will keep you. This will give you something to do this winter if I get behind. No, that's good. That's good. I appreciate that. That will be. Uh, okay. That will yeah, be helpful. Perfect. All right. Cool.